16-year-old India Trimble spent the last two years of her life racing the ATV motocross series in the United States. In 2021, she finished fourth in the women's 15 plus and fifth in the schoolgirl 13 to 17 classes. Without even one motocross-worthy, smaller displacement sport ATV currently available for purchase new. Like many national competitors in her age range, India raced a hybrid ATV, combining a more modern 250-class four-stroke dirt bike power plant with a stock or aftermarket ATV chassis. While some classes in this age range allow the use of discontinued production sport quads, modern dirt bike-based power has proven to be the way to go if you're planning on visiting the podium on a regular basis. There are two main ways to go about building a hybrid race quad for younger competitors. Companies like JB Racing offer full rolling chassis, requiring the use of a number of stock and aftermarket components to create a hand-built race machine. Motocross parents like Dave and Holly Trimble have found that the easiest and most affordable way to build a competitive hybrid racer is by starting with a built Honda TRX 450R race machine, which can be converted pretty easily into a 250. This method has two distinct advantages. First, you can purchase a fully built used race quad for a little more than the price of a stock machine, saving a ton of money over starting with a stock ATV or a full aftermarket chassis. Secondly, once the rider's old enough for 450cc classes, you can simply swap the engine back out to the 450 and keep on racing. India Trimble is a multi-sport athlete, so unfortunately she was unavailable to ride for us. Instead, we acquired the services of her younger brother Talon to show us what the Honda Hybrid is capable of. Are you filming me? Yeah. What's up? My name is Talon Trimble. Oh, are you Wi-Fi? Because I'm feeling a connection. <laughs> Talon finished fourth in the 90 Shifter Senior and third in the 90 Open Senior classes for 2021. He'll be moving up to the 250 Mod Youth All-Star and Schoolboy Senior classes for 2022, racing his own TRX CRF 250 conversion. The most exciting thing about moving up to the 250 class is Probably having more riders and competitors in the class. It's a lot bigger class than all the many bikes and it's one of the biggest classes in the whole series. So going from a 90 to a 450 is a massive jump in size. So having a 250 class allows us to have that experience and the size and the weight of the machine without having that full 450 power. A very cool and unique machine, India's race quad began life as one of former women's national motocross champion Heather Bird's fully built Honda TRX 450Rs. With her parents, Dave and Holly, former national motocross competitors themselves, Holly purchased one of Heather's race machines, donating it to her daughter's racing program a few years back. The quad is built on a stock 2005 TRX 450R frame with a bunch of high-end boutique aftermarket chromoly chassis components bolted to it to improve handling, strength, and control. A plus one inch Walsh Racecraft any vibe steering stem and bar clamp were used up front with an adjustable height JB Racing subframe bolted up to the back. The Trimble set it up around three quarters of an inch lower than the stock subframe, better for smaller riders and for getting the rider and machine center of gravity down for faster cornering. The TRX was widened and lengthened from stock to improve cornering and high speed stability, with Walsh Racecraft plus three A-arms up front in a plus one and a quarter inch Walsh EasyLink swing arm and EasyLink linkage used out back. Widening out the back of the machine to match the front, RPM's Dominator 2 axle has set the standard for strength on the national motocross circuit for some time now. Billet aluminum front wheel hubs from Hardcore increase strength, rigidity, and look sweet. India runs PEP shocks, 
For decades, they've been regarded by many top racers as the best shocks that money can buy. Their top-of-the-line PB1 shocks are ride height, compression, and rebound adjustable. With a single shock on the back of a race quad doing all of the work, PEP's PB1 rear shock utilizes a massive reservoir to keep the shock running cool and consistent. Precision Racing Steering Stabilizers have won more races and championships than any other on the market. Not a hard accomplishment when almost every serious race runs one. Their durability and unmatched adjustability make them a must-have upgrade for racers at any level. All of the high-end chassis and suspension components add up to 450 Pro Class worthy handling on a machine putting out 15 to 20 less horsepower than a built 450. The result is an ATV that allows the rider to more easily attack the track, while taking full advantage of the high revving 250's available power. So moving from a 90 to a 250, uh, it's definitely a big change, but you're able to have more power and it picks up a lot more and you're able to do bigger stuff. And for me, I'm able to be a little bit more comfortable on the bike, having more room and me being taller on a 90. The biggest advantage for me being on a bigger bike is having the more room so I can scrub and press off the faces more to get lower to the ground. And that benefits me coming from a 90 being a lot bigger on it and allows me to ride more aggressive. The machine is slowed by stock calipers and brake pads with streamlined rotors at both ends for improved cooling and stopping power. Streamlined steel braided brake lines further improve power and feel and work with the extended Walsh A-arms and swing arm. The combination of the lighter quad, rider, and improved braking allow the 250 to scrub off speed and brake later than a 450. Maxxis is a leader in sport ATV tire technology. 2610 front and 181008 rear Maxxis Razor Plus MX tires were used at both ends. They're wrapped around US-made DWT aluminum wheels using their rockout wheel front with a race standard 4 plus 1 offset in a DWT single beadlock wheel out back using a 3 plus 5 offset. They're some of the lightest and strongest wheels on the market. No run flat system was used to keep rotating mass to a minimum. Controls weren't overlooked on this machine either. India has enjoyed the added comfort of Fast Company Flex Bar since her Cobra 65 days, making them an easy carryover to the 250. Her dad attributes the flex bars to helping India get comfortable on the 250 more quickly and for being able to charge late in the moto. Running medium compression and hard rebound elastomers, these flex bars were set up for harder hits with a lighter rider, like when you come up short in case of jump or overshoot the downside and land on the flat. Spider A3 grips are some of our favorites. They're tacky providing grip and help reduce vibration. A works connection clutch lever adds the ability to easily adjust the clutch on the fly. Power mad handguards look cool and offer some protection from flying mud and debris. A custom seat cover from 4Works improves cosmetics and contact with the machine. Wrath Racing competition nerf bars help keep your wheels from becoming entangled with your competitors. They're constructed of aluminum and replace the stock foot pegs and plastic heel guards with netted heel guards and much longer, wider foot pegs aiding in control. Further protection for the machine and mounting for the number plates is provided by a Wrath Racing front bumper and rear grab bar. They're pretty minimalist, light and strong, making them popular at the track. A 4Works A57 carbon fiber hood provides an added bit of flair that you'd expect to see on a national race machine. It's also functional, providing an ideal surface on which to mount a number plate. A full graphics kit from FTR Power Sports separates the looks of this machine from the competition. Their custom kit includes the number plates and the incorporation of the logos of all of the companies and sponsors that went into this build. And now for the heart of the matter, the motor and getting it into the machine. Mm -hmm. 
Dave Trimble tells us, if you're looking to construct a TRX 450R 254 stroke hybrid, start with a 2006 or newer TRX 450R and a 2018 or newer CRF 250R or KTM 250SX engine. JB Racing makes a motor mount kit that will more easily marry these generations of ATV chassis and dirt bike engine together. JB Racing also makes the aluminum fuel tank you'll need to mount the CR or KTM engine's fuel pump tube. Because the Trimbles already had a fully built 2005 TRX and a 2011 CRF 250R engine, they decided to make that combo work, working a little harder instead of starting over with an unknown ATV and engine. They utilized lower motor mounts from Walsh Racecraft and uppers from JB Racing. JB Racing had to modify the lower motor mounts to make it all work together, and it worked well, based upon results and appearance. The engine is internally stock, with the exception of a 13.2 to 1 Wiseco piston to freshen up the top end. Clot's 10W40 oil lubricates the engine with a K&N oil filter filtering contaminants. While the clutch is internally stock, a Henson Racing clutch cover adds a bit more oil capacity and a looks trick. Fuel is fed to the engine via the stock CRF fuel injection. Vortex remapped the stock ECM to work with the engine's intake and exhaust. The CRF engine's high flow intake consists of a fuel customs intake track for the 450R, made it up to a lidless stock TRX 450R airbox. A UniFoam air filter offers plenty of filtration in case of a bad start during a dusty moto. For an efficient free-flowing exhaust, an FMF CRF 250R headpipe was mated up to a modified DASA Racing TRX 450R midpipe and a DASA Racing silencer. The 2011 CRF 250R engine produced 38.2 horsepower at 11,000 RPMs and 19.39 foot-pounds of torque, according to Motocross Action Magazine. For 2022, it produces 41.32 peak horsepower at 11,800 RPMs and 20.7 foot-pounds of torque. The biggest difference is the ability to more reliably build added horsepower on the later generation CRF motors. Pushing around the added weight and drag of an ATV, the smaller power plant has proven surprisingly reliable, even for a Honda. India ran the entire 2019 and 2020 seasons without her mechanic having to crack into the engine for repairs. It finally received a crank up rebuild for the 2021 season and is still going strong at season's end. Moving from a 90 to a 250, it's definitely a big adjustment, but um, I'm able to have more power, of course, to be able to pick up a lot more and do bigger stuff. And, it picks up right off the bottom, so I don't have to slip or drag out the clutch as much. The 250 lacks the torque of a 450, but still pulls respectably off the bottom. Power is very linear, building up to the engine's peak of 11,000 RPMs, with most 450 race motors peaking out in the 8,000 to 8,500 RPM range. You can clearly hear that the 250 is turning more RPMs to the track, with less rotating mass in the engine than a 450 the 250 revs notably faster. It also makes the 250 feel lighter on the track than the roughly 20 pound difference in engine weight on the scale would indicate. Putting out around 40 horsepower, this virtually stock four-stroke isn't far off from the 45 horsepower most two-stroke race motors were producing in the late 80s and early 90s. With a fast, lightweight rider on board, it's no wonder why these little 250s are capable of producing lap times that make some 450A class riders sweat. In conclusion, Trimble Racing's TRX 450R CRF 250R Hybrid is a good example of what's winning in youth ATV motocross racing today. It's unlikely that you'll see Honda or Yamaha building a machine like this in the future, as they'd have to sell it for riders age 16 and up, plus the fact that it would cost the consumer nearly as much as a 450. As usual, the aftermarket is keeping the sport of ATV racing alive. If you need to build a machine for your up-and-coming racer, or you would simply like to own a sweet 254-stroke sport quad for yourself, we suspect that you could buy a used TRX 450R race quad, a used CRF engine, and the necessary parts to combine the two for somewhere between $11,000 and $12,000. While that sounds expensive, remember, this is a machine that a rider can race for years, 
by simply swapping back to the 450 motor when the time comes to move up, making this machine pretty affordable in the long run. If you'd like to see more sport ATV content like this, please leave us a comment and let us know. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching.